question is about trigonometry and the R cos method. Um, it gives us a function here f of x is 7 cos 2x subtract 24 sine 2x and it says given that f of x can be written in the form r cos 2x plus alpha where r is bigger than 0 and alpha is between 0 and 90 find the value of r and alpha. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. This is very, very easy. You should be familiar with this. Now, you know that we can therefore write 7 cos of 2x subtract 24 sine of 2x in this form, r cos of 2x plus alpha. Okay, so always write down your original function and then your r cos or r sine or whatever it tells you. Then expand the r form. So this would be using the addition formula r cos 2x cos alpha subtract r sine of 2x sine of alpha. And you know this is equal to 7 cos of 2x, subtract 24 sine of 2x. Now, therefore, comparing cos 2x is r cos alpha must be 7. And similarly, r sine alpha must be 24. So write that down. Write those conclusions down. So r sine alpha, we just said is 24, and r cos alpha we said previously, is 7. Okay? Now, you know, um, therefore, that tan alpha is this one divided by this one, must be 24 over 7. So, therefore, alpha is the inverse tan of 24 over 7. Keep your calculator in degrees mode for this one because it asks alpha to be in degrees and inverse tan, 24 over 7, and you get yourself... 73.7 degrees, 73.7 degrees. Also, we need to state R. Well, R is always this number squared plus this number squared square rooted. When you do that, you get R is 25. That's your R, that's your theta. Therefore, F of X can be written as 25 cos of 2X plus 73.7 and state that at the end always. Part B, it says hence, so make sure we're using part A, solve the following between 0 and 180 giving your answer to one decimal place. Now in part A we have given another expression for this and we have said that this is equal to 25 cos of 2x plus 73.7. Uh, and we're solving that as equal to 12.5. So divide both sides by 25, and you would get that cos of 2x plus 73.7 would be a half. And therefore, 2x plus 73.7 is the inverse cos of a half. And tap that on your calculator. The inverse cos of a half is 60. So the principal value is 60. Now, we're going to draw out our graph to see what other values are important to us. We're working between 0 and 180. However, because we've, we're doubling our x and we're adding 73, let's double the 180 and add 73. So well, let's go between 0, between x, times this by 2 and add 73. You're approximately between these, approximately, we want to draw the graph between here. So cos goes like this. Okay, now this point here is 90, this point here is 180, this point here is 270, this point here is 360, and this point here is 450, and they will cover us up to there. Now 60 is one of our answers here. Now remember, that's 60 from a tip, so this is 60 degrees from a maximum. So where will the other points be? Will there be one here and one here? Now 60 either way from 360. So one of the values will be 300, and the other will clearly be 420. So therefore, our values are uh, 60, 300, and 420. So what's our x? Well, to all of these, we subtract 73.7 and divide by 2. This will ignore this value here, and the others, you do 300, subtract 73.7, and you divide by 2, and you get 113. 
uh, 73.1 degrees. And this one here, you do 420, subtract 73.7 and divide by 2, and you get yourself 173.1 degrees. And you're done for 5 marks. Okay, part C. It says express, we want to express 14 cos squared uh, x, subtract 48 sine x cos x in the form, so we want to write it in the form a cos of 2x plus b sine of 2x plus c. Okay, so why don't we just write down, um, let's write down this a here. Why don't we write down cos 2x in terms of cos squares? It would be 2 cos squared x subtract 1. And why don't we write our sine 2x in terms of its expansion, which is 2 sine x cos x. And let's keep our c as it is. So therefore, what we'd have is we'd have that we would have 2a cos squared x, and then subtract a, plus 2b sine x cos x, plus c. Now, just one more line, that subtract a and that plus c, they're just numbers, so let's combine them instead. So we have 2a cos squared x plus 2b sine x cos x, and then we have plus c subtract a. Now, comparing these with these coefficients here, here we've got cos squared, sine x cos x, and a number, and that's what we wanted. And here we can write this out. Now, what must a therefore be? If 2a, uh, that's how many cos squares we've got, and we want 14. 2a must be 14, so a must be 7. And here, um, negative 48, I should have included that, must be equal to 2b. So therefore, b must be negative 24. And lastly, uh, how would you get your c minus a? Well, c minus a must be 0, there's no number here. So therefore, um, as we know a is 7, c minus 7 must be 0, and c is equal to 7. So, if we want to express it in that form, we would therefore express it as um, uh, a cos 2x, well what's our a? 7 cos 2x, what's our b we found out? Subtract 24 sine of 2x, and then we would have plus 7, and we'd be done. And the last part, it says, hence, using the answers to A and C, deduce the maximum value of this. Well, this here, we have just shown that can be written as 7 cos of 2x, subtract 24 sine of 2x plus 7. Okay? So we have shown that that can be written as that. Now, from part A, this here, well, that can be written as 25 cos of 2x and was it plus 73.7, uh, yeah, plus 73.7, and you still have your plus 7. Now, what's the maximum this can be? Well, the maximum cos can be is 1, so the maximum this could be is 25, and add on 7, therefore the maximum must be 25 plus 7, which is equal to 32, and you're done for your two marks.